All right, all right. Well, looks like Canon just released the Canon R6 Mark II. It looks like a pretty well-balanced full-frame camera and a little bit different from the Canon R6 that came out a little over two years ago. Not a ton of improvements, but quite a few key features that make it a pretty compelling option if you're looking for a full-frame camera, for sure. So this camera has a 24 megapixel sensor, which is just about four megapixels more than the Canon R6, the original, which doesn't sound like a whole lot. In the grand scheme of things, it really isn't, but one of the cool things that it can do is now with that 24 megapixel sensor, it can actually record ProRes 6K RAW externally, which is, uh, that's, that's pretty awesome for a camera in this price point that's full frame. Uh, a couple other features that it does have that the R6 did not, and one big feature is they got rid of the 30 minute record limit, which is insane that the R6, the original one, had that, that record limit. I would give Canon credit, but I think that this should have been removed in the R6 before, like I said. So, uh, you know, it's, it's long overdue. Now, interestingly enough, it does still have a limit, but it's six hours, which I don't know why on earth you'd be recording something for six hours long, unless you're doing some insane live stream or something crazy. I'm just glad they removed that 30 minute record limit, but wow, I don't know why you would, I don't know why anybody would record for six hours straight. So I don't plan on uh, doing anything that long. Um, a couple other features too. It does have a change in the dial on the left side of the, the top of the camera. That is no longer where the on and off switch is. It has been moved over to the right side of the camera. Um, so if you're coming from the R5 or the R6, the original models, this might be a little bit of change for you in terms of muscle memory. So that's one key difference and I think it's a good change I just think that it's probably something they should have thought of when they originally released the the first two uh, models in this in this R series another thing it does have too is it actually has that multi interface hot shoe sorry I said multi interface it's actually multi function hot shoe I think there's like a little bit of a difference between how they they name it for Canon and how they name it for Sony uh, with Sony they call it the multi interface hot shoe for Canon and it's called the multi function hot shoe now you're able to use that Tascam XLR device to be able to record audio straight into the Canon R6 which is R6 Mark II which is uh, which is awesome. A couple things that are still the same it has a dual pixel CMOS autofocus uh, two, and then also has the five axis image stabilization. Now I think this can do eight stops when it's combined with the IS and one of the new Canon RF lenses. It does have a 3.69 million dot OLED electronic viewfinder, which isn't the best, but it's fine. It's fine for this price range. For autofocus points, it has just over a thousand face detection points. I'm looking at the BNH website and it says approximately 1,053 face detection autofocus points, which is which is awesome. Another cool thing it can do is it can actually record HD up to 180 frames per second, which I don't think any of the other existing Canon cameras in this range or even under can do. I think the R5C has the ability to, but don't quote me on that, I'm not 100% sure. Now for a couple of things that I think that they should have thought through a little bit more when releasing this specific camera model. I think it was a huge mistake to stick with that rinky dink, stupid micro HDMI cable. I don't understand why Canon bothers sticking with it. I don't understand why anybody would want to use that type of port, especially recording externally for ProRes RAW. It just doesn't make sense to me. You're gonna need a really nice clamp to like hold that sucker down because that thing is so small and just fidgety. You're gonna have to get ready to like really jerry rig something to make sure that that cable just, you're gonna really have to. Anyway, that's just a minor thing that I noticed with this R6 Mark II. I don't understand, like I said, why they went with that cable. And one other thing that I think people were expecting and is a little bit of a disappointment is that this camera doesn't have a backside illuminated sensor. To me, it's not a huge deal. I wasn't totally expecting it, but you know, I know a lot of people were hoping for it. It has its advantages, of course, but at this price point, I didn't really think that that was a guarantee that we were gonna get that in this camera. You able to shoot? 4K 24, 4K 30, and 4K 60, 10 bit, C-Log 3, you know, pretty much the same as you were able to before with the original Canon R6. 
It has a three inch 1.62 million dot LCD screen, which is pretty standard, something we would have expected. It's now using the upgraded processor, the Digic X processor, which I think is the same one that's used in the Canon R3. It's capable of processing higher bursts of speed. Like I said, it supports that 40 frames per second fast shooting in electronic shutter mode. I also think that you can I also think that the ISO range has been increased too as a result of it. I think for any photographers or videographers that are looking to make that jump into full frame, this is a solid option. I think that if you're looking at this in comparison to the a7 IV, it's tricky. I think that just based on the features alone, and I know that there's a lot more than just specs and you know me listing out this information it's also one of the most well-rounded full frame cameras i've seen i think it would be a great option for anybody looking to jump into the full frame ecosystem that canon has i will say you do have to remember that canon has said that there are going to be no third-party lenses manufactured for the rf mount which is very unfortunate and i think that's going to drive a lot of people over to sony as a result canon pretty much cut off all the third-party manufacturers from producing lenses for the rf mount so you're basically stuck in canon's ecosystem which i would recommend the canon lenses first of course but with other brands and manufacturers like Sony, for example, you don't have that restriction. I do still have an appreciation for Canon. I just don't know if this is necessarily the number one choice that I think people are gonna consider. If you do wanna stick with Canon or if you have old Canon EF glass, obviously this is a great option. It could be even a great A camera for somebody and then you could get an R7 as a, as a backup camera. I think if you're looking at this camera in comparison to the A7 IV, they're both pretty neck and neck. I will say that this probably just based off specs alone, this edges out the a7 IV because you don't have that APS-C mode for 4K60, which the a7 IV restricts you to. Yes, this does have 24 megapixels as opposed to the 33 megapixels on the a7 IV, but I don't think it's that dramatic of a difference. I think that you probably won't notice it tremendously. Yes, I know it's like eight or nine more megapixels on the a7 IV, but 24 megapixels is still an amazing amount of megapixels. It's it's the perfect sweet spot. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Anyway, so these are just my thoughts about the Canon R6 Mark II. I think that overall, it's a very well-rounded full-frame camera. I think it would be a solid option for anybody to go with, especially if you're looking to stay in the Canon ecosystem, or if you're coming over from an old Canon camera like a Canon 5D Mark IV or, 6D Mark II, or even if you just want to get a new Canon RF camera. I think the Canon R6 Mark II is probably what the Canon R6 original should have been. And I think it's what most people were expecting when the Canon R6 was originally released back in the summer of 2020. So I will say it is pretty cool that this camera came out finally. I'm not as impressed as I think some other people are with this camera. That pretty much concludes my thoughts on the camera. I'd love to know your thoughts on the Canon R6 Mark II. Feel free to leave a comment, like, and subscribe if you're interested in these types of videos. I plan to make more videos that are a little different than just reactions of camera announcements. I know that's what I've just done recently, these past two videos. But uh, yeah, feel free to subscribe and I'll catch you later.